of us. And that revelation actually changes us. like their heart needs some extra love right now and they want to come up before we close the music for prayer I want you to do that right now there's a supernatural impartation that the Lord is wanting to make in everyone's hearts today a Christmas present that is greater than any other Christmas present that you could ever receive. or in a shower and you spend time there's a saturation that happens and right at this moment there's a saturation that the Holy Spirit wants to do to help you to bless you and I would encourage all of you whether you're standing here at the altar or whether you're sitting in your chair to humble yourself before God and no matter how you think you are just admit your need God I I need your love I can't love you the way you ask me to love you with all my heart and soul and strength I can't love the person next to me I can't love my children I can't love my grandchildren I can't love friends I can't love anybody without your help to the degree because Jesus you said to love like you love which was a laying down of life greater than anything. So Father, I thank you for a supernatural impartation. If anybody else on the prayer team has an unction to be a part of imparting love right now, you can be a part of this ministry. I thank you for fresh love. Fresh love that heals and delivers and sets free. I thank you for the power of your love here today, Father, that breaks chains, that cleanses from grief and sorrow and strengthens. Father, you said that you look to and fro for hearts that are soft towards you to cure them, to repair them, conquer everything that would come against them. I speak healing. I release blessing and kindness and mercy. I release everyone here from any demonic stronghold or demonic thinking that would bind. And I loose you by the power of God's love his spirit I speak new life and new love and all that love produces may it multiply in you and through you may it change you from the inside out Father I thank you for the power of your love I thank you that love delivers, heals, and seals. I thank you that it's real. I rebuke any and all foul spirits that would keep anyone from receiving the pure, stunning, and excellent love of the Father right now.
love from the greatest authority that has the greatest power. Thank you, Father, for the new. I thank you that your love renews and refreshes and heals and delivers. I thank you. The smartest thing we could ever do is open up our heart to you, the purest of love, the kindest of love, the mercy that is plenteous. We thank you for your mercy that releases love beyond anything we've ever known or could receive from any person unless it's you coming through us. Our love to heal hearts, to renew minds, to heal bodies, relationships. I think out of your out of your love, Father, you even restore financially. You restore fortunes according to scripture. I pray a prayer of restoration double for trouble and sevenfold restoration for any losses that anybody has experienced here in this place. Father, may it find them and overwhelm them in this Christmas season. You said that you had gifts of healing and restoration. So I release those gifts right now by faith to everyone here that we would believe and receive your goodness and your kindness in Jesus name and everybody said amen could we um, could we just say thank you Jesus did you have something you wanted to say what what did you want to say it's okay what did you get Let's encourage somebody. Go ahead. Um, so recently, probably um, the last like two months, I just felt this massive attack on my life. Even to the point where I couldn't eat anything at all without feeling really sick and like I was like losing my mind and I'm so grateful that through that whole season that I'm coming out of I know Jesus and I know that he did not bring me this far to leave me now and so I feel this overwhelming love and the kindness and mercy of God that just wants to break chains off of your life right now. That he wants to heal your body and he wants to heal your mind and he wants you to know that he did not bring you this far to leave you now. And in those dark places where you feel like hopelessness is all you feel. He's right there in those moments. And he's waiting for you to just say, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I trust you. And I'm going to come out of this stronger because I chose you in it. I chose you in it. I didn't run. I didn't doubt. I didn't question you. I chose you in it. So that's this moment right now. That's what God wants to do for you right now. And I'm happy to say that choosing God in it 
I'm at the other side of being completely healed and restored. I love you guys. A few weeks ago, on my way down to the chamber of life to be with Jesus alone, I was walking through the house and he said, Merry Christmas. And I felt when he said Merry Christmas, the understanding and the interpretation that I had was he was going to give gifts of healing in this season of December. And I've never heard the voice quite like that, his voice. So I really am really, really purposely going slow, and I'm sorry for the kids that are excited. Like one right here is full of life and has childlike faith and has nothing hindering. But I want to make sure that we do a complete job here according to the Holy Spirit and that any hindrance that the Holy Spirit wants to set you free of, that we do a complete job. So if you feel like you're ready to just move on, please forgive me or please be patient, either one, because I'm accountable to my boss. If there's anybody that could relate to what Christy just said that has not come up here uh, and you would like Christy out of her fresh faith to pray for you, just come up right now. And then I think we're going to be able to bring this to a close. If there's little children and something can be done decently ordered to uh, allow the children to go, that's fine. But I just felt there's a something that when you've gone through something, you have fresh faith about the reality of God. He wants you to minister out of that fresh faith. So I want to make sure that that's done. So if you could relate to what Christie's encouragement was and you want her to pray for you out of her fresh faith, let's just take a minute if everybody could just be reverent and give the gift of attention and reverence while there's a few others pray for, I would appreciate it.
by standing to our feet, please? Just raise your hands for a moment. And by faith, receive His love right now. By faith, just receive His love right now. Say thank you, Father God, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling me with love right now. God is by faith, exercising faith, believing in the unseen, amazing, gracious, merciful God. That's how you receive by faith. Let's sing what Bible is singing. His soul sings. Find someone to hug and bless and encourage. Tell them they're a gift. They're a Christmas gift. today for every age group up to 18. The teens are up with pastor and so I am at the pulpit today to give you the word of the Lord concerning authority. So good to have you in the house this week of celebrating the birth of Christ. Amen. And just as a reminder, we'll be back here Friday evening for our Christmas celebration together and I pray that uh, you come and that you bring those who you know will be blessed that you can minister to and with uh, in this coming season of Christmas. So we have been talking about authority as I said, is it possible to bring up the crash scene that we have had? Uh, because that's an important part of what I want to talk about today. So pastor has been with you the last few weeks ministering on authority, a very powerful message. You know, don't you just love that word, authority? It, it's just a power word. I th when I think of it, I think of, you know, like when a two-year-old says no. That's a power word. Authority is a power word in the Spirit of God, and we're going to talk about that today. But in the last few weeks, one of the big things that I hope you have as a takeaway that Pastor has said to you is, our Father is not a liar. Yes. Our Father is not a liar. That scripture is really significant. That comes out in Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. And to share it with you out of the message translation, it says it a little bit differently. It says, "Our God is not a man that he should lie. He is not given to lies and not a son of man changing his mind. 
Does he speak and not do what he says? Does he promise and not come through? That is not our God, that he would lie. You know, and lie is an interesting word. Lie is when we don't have the complete or tell the entire truth. So the Lord is always unchangeable, and he is the fullness of truth. And that's why there is fullness of authority when we think of him. Another thing that we learned was that Jesus is a constant demonstration of authority of the Father and that he has um, gifts that Amazon doesn't get offer you. Right. <laughs> right? So those of you who are flipping through different websites or Amazon and clicking off things this week for the holidays, uh, just remember you cannot buy what Jesus has for you. And I wanted to share a couple of those gifts, uh, and I'm looking for the people that I felt the Lord wanted me to minister to, and they're not in the room, so we'll come back to that. You know, you never want to miss out on a word of the Lord. Sometimes when we go to the bathroom, <laughs> it's usually the time I'm like, oh, Lord, I was just going to speak to that person. But you know what? I love the Holy Spirit. He comes back around uh, in a more opportune time, and so I will have those words that I will give to those people. So the crash, you know, when we were thinking about the words of this year and it came to December, I said to my husband, I said, the word I have just doesn't seem like it goes with Christmas at all. It just sounds a little bit contrary. And I said, it's authority. And he said, yep, that's it. And so I knew that that was the word, but what I was not totally sure about is why the Lord wanted that word. And again, over the last couple of weeks, you've been learning about the power and the authority of the Father. And when I thought about it, and uh, Hannah and I were designing a picture for this, I said, I feel like there needs to be a simple crash, a very simple picture, but around it is swirling this motion, this movement. And the Lord is in the midst of us just bringing this new um, presence, if you will, to the point that we know in 2023, the Lord has spoken that there was going to be in his realm, in the heavenly realm, an explosion. And I share that with you early before 2023 even has begun, because the Lord wants you to know that explosion, when he says explosion, it's a good thing. How many of you know that there are words that we hear and we think, oh, that's not a good word? I don't like that word. That hasn't meant good things. But the Lord says explosion, and it means a good thing. And I saw sort of this piercing breakthrough of things that, just as there was ministry in the gifts today of healing, and Rapha, the father, the great physician, showed up, there is a presence of the Holy Spirit that is hovering for 2023, speaking about the things that he's going to explode in your life. He's going to break through in your life. Things that you haven't seen changes in, God says, I'm about to show up in a mighty way. Amen. I'm about to show up in a mighty way. But you have to receive that gift. Remember the whole message on gifts? You have to receive it, and you have to embrace it. You have to want that gift. And one of the ways that you embrace that gift is to be thankful that God has presented this invitation of a gift for you, of explosion. Oh, that's a real leap of faith, Pastor D. I know, isn't it great? We want to leap right into it and say, thank you, Father, for the explosive presence of your spirit in 2023 in my life in this region, on my street, in my town. Every time I go down Main Street in this town, I thank God for the town that he put me in because I'm here for a reason and I'm here to pray for this town and I'm here to uh, embrace the people and um, whatever God gives me to pray over them. God places you strategically through the region for a purpose, for a reason. So what else did we learn? We learned that we're not here to merely entertain him, but we're called to get in the game with him. And how much more in 2023? You're called to be in the game, everybody. You know what? I did something I don't usually ever do. Like Saturdays, 
and my kids will attest to it, we never went out. We don't go out Saturday nights because we want to be fresh for the top of the week. We know that we're in the game Sunday morning. But I stayed up a little later last night working on a stocking for my grandchild, and I was watching a football game that was in the crazy lake effect snow of Buffalo, and they couldn't see a thing. They were brushing the field to try to get a place to kick the, the ball, and it was, it was sort of like crazy weather. And I just thought, God, this is explosive. Like literally one minute wasn't snowing, and the next minute it was like, they couldn't see a thing. They were probably hoping they're just throwing it and you know somebody would be there. And it was awesome because people were there catching it and falling and sliding, making snow angels. I mean, these 200 plus, 300 pound football players making snow angels on the field. I mean, it was really a, a sight. My point in saying that is that sometimes explosions come very quickly and in a mighty way to get your attention. But God's calling you to be in the game with him, not sitting on the sidelines where you're wondering what's happening down there on the field because you can't see a thing. You're called to be in it. You're called to be in it with him. So authority, it takes an authority. So when I see this picture, I see something very pure and simple but very powerful. You know, God could have brought Jesus to earth any way he wanted, right? That was the plan. But I mean, the way that we know he's coming back in glory on a white horse with legions of angels, he could have entered that way, right? And said, I am King Jesus, and I am here to rule and reign. You know, take your best vivid imagination of a movie or anything they show you on earth and multiply it a hundred times. He could have entered like that, but he didn't. He entered like this, which really gets you to kind of stop, say la, pause and think about that, right? Like, God, wow, I expected this, but you did this. God is very, very faithful to his word and his promises and his plan. However, he is looking for us to conform to him, not us to put him in a box and we tell him what he has to be. So in 2023, it's going to look more like that, more like God showing up. And are you going to yield and bend to him? Or are you going to say, no, that's not the way I thought it would be? 2023, it's going to be very interesting. Everything does not have to be perfect to experience him because he is perfect. Another thing we learned. So let's talk about authority. Authority is in the word of God over a hundred times, the word authority. And it isn't power. I'm going to tell you the difference between power and authority in a moment. But authority is something that you experience both in this realm and in the spiritual realm. There are two things. The natural many times will reflect what is happening in the heavenlies. And so how much authority you have is very much directly connected to your relationship with the Lord and the clarity and the definition that you are seeking and pursuing. And the authority of God will show up. So as a natural example, I just wanted to share something. A picture came back to me last night when I was thinking about how the Lord would want me to describe this. Um, authority has to do with rulership. It has to do with ruling over something. So in the natural, many of you own something, right? You own a car, you own a piece of property. And I thought about when I was growing up, I lived on a street where there was a person who owned a piece of property and everybody in town knew this person. Do you know why? Because this person was trying to prove a point about paying taxes or something. I was a child, I didn't remember. All I remember is, Every year he accrued more stuff that he put on his front lawn. And I think by the time I left town, he had about 18 cars out there. Because he could, to prove a point. So you know that kind of property? You know, you know that kind of mentality? So he was trying to prove that on my property, I'm going to do this. Well, the Lord says, I've given you rulership and I've given you properties, but what are you doing with them? Are you putting old junk cars on your front yard? Are you allowing the Spirit of God to keep moving you and drawing you into the, the refreshment presence where there's a power that works through you that is so well-defined that people are attracted to that? Yeah. 
of what's working on the inside of you. Now, sometimes I understand people may seem like they're intimidated, but they really want that power of God that works in your life. When you say something like, you know, in this scenario, I believe that the Lord is saying this, and they're like, wow, how did you know that? You are demonstrating the power of God. You're demonstrating using the authority God has given you because there's a spiritual authority. So what is it? Spiritual authority is a God-given right to receive and use God's power that flows from the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you. So God has given you a very special key. He's given you something that you are called to be able to put in the lock, turn things, and see freedom come. If we use that, it's a very effective thing. If we don't use it or don't know how to use it, it has a rippling effect. Just like that gentleman on Main Street in South Deerfield. He had a rippling effect because everybody who went by that house or everybody who lived near that house was really disappointed at how he chose to use his rulership. Right? So our ability to embrace the Spirit of God and our willingness to come in to that place with him where we know and we say, Father, not my will, but yours be done on earth. And every day I want to do your will on this earth. And every day I'm going to come and get my assignments from you to do your will on this earth. That shows and that reflects and that has a rippling effect into the lives of all the people around you. Your choices. So God is giving us gifts that he wants distributed. They're benefiting us because, as Pastor Dan said in the beginning, when you give a gift to somebody and you see their face light up or you see how they receive it, it blesses you. So you're automatically blessed when you have the gifts of God operating in your life. When you use discernment on your job, when you pray over your rulership in that job, in your office, for the employees you work with, for your boss. You're, you're taking the power and the authority God has given you, and you are making a difference with it. But it all started with that. Something so simple and seemingly insignificant. You know how powerful simple things are in life? What a big impact that they can make? A very powerful impact. So how do I know if I have authority? Well, the Word of God says it. Luke chapter 19 and verse 1. And he, referring to Jesus, called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over the demons and to cure diseases. So who are his disciples today? You and I, right? So if Jesus was in front of us, he'd say, I am giving you the power, I'm giving you the keys, the power and authority to have power over the demonic realm, over the demons, and to cure diseases. Oh, well, I don't really know about that. Well, that's what the Word of God says, and God is not a liar. So we're either going to choose to pursue truth and believe him, or we leave it on the table. So I would ask you to evaluate at the end of 2022, how many things have you left on the table? Well, that's nice, but that's not for me. Oh, you know, that's pastor. I mean, he's just like really crazy about curing diseases. He is. He's been studying about that more than ever. So that tells me his calling going into 2023 is going to have a lot to do with healing the sick. And you know what? We can be sick in more than just our physical body. We can be sick emotionally and we can be sick mentally. We have a lot of realms we can be sick. We can be sick financially. Do you know how you're sick financially? You have a spiritual battle with finances and it always seems like you're in the negative and in a hole. That's a spiritual force. So what did Jesus say? He says, I've given you authority over those demons. Spirit of poverty, you've got to go in my life. What are the spiritual forces that are telling you they're bigger than the power of God? Those are what you have to address in 2023. Mark 16, 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on this earth, that means you say no to, and whatever you loose on earth, one will be bound and one will be loosed. So if I am saying, Father, right now, I bind 
that spirit of fear that's trying to torment me, as Christy shared her example, it means you lock it up. You've got to see yourself putting it in jail. You're locking it up. So heaven says, you heard her, lock it up. And all of the angels that God's assigned to you go after those demonic power, demons, and spiritual forces and take them out of your way. Take them down. And you have to stick with that. You stay there. You don't say the next day, you know what? I'm so afraid. I, I'm never going to get rid of this fear. You have to stay in the place of agreement with God. And then it says, if you lose something, Father, right now, I lose healing in the lives of all the people who couldn't be here because they're feeling sick today. I lose healing into this region. When I go down the street, I lose healing to the people on my street. Every time I see an ambulance, I lose healing and life to the person in that ambulance. Guess what? Heaven goes to work because I'm doing the word according to Matthew 16. See, I'm in the place of alignment, which means authority is going to flow and the power of God is going to show up. So power is about an ability, but authority is about a responsibility. Did you get that? Power is saying there's an ability because God flows through me, but authority is about taking the responsibility to speak it out and see it happen. Are you with me today? Okay. So this is really good. Chew on it. Take it with you because this is your 2023 appetizer. God has gifts he wants distributed through you. Amen. Healing. Amen. There you go. You said the Lord showed me a picture. You were circling and circling, and God says you've been seven times around this mountain, and God says I want you to click in, and when you click in, I just saw like those um, mechanisms in a safe all line up and a clear path straight ahead. Amen. Hannah, the Lord said to me, plans are in a man's mind, this is the scripture in Proverbs, but God orders your steps. You are leaving for Boston, and we are blessing you and launching you to go into the future. However, the Lord showed me you're going to take a right-hand turn. I don't know what that is, but be ready because many times we have a plan and God's just getting us somewhere to where he can show us what's actually going to take place. So there's something there that's going to happen when you transition to Boston. I didn't have that in my head. I didn't just make that up. I turned on the faucet. There's a power on the inside. And when you let it flow, then there's an authority that you walk in. There's a realm of responsibility that you find yourself in that you're called to be a part of. So we tap into what it is. Luke 10, 19. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. Those are the things that when you're binding things up, they no longer can have that free for all in your life. So wherever you feel like there's just a chaotic free-for-all, you've got to address that thing. You've got to say no more. God says no more according to his word. Right here. It's right here. It is written. You had the best example you could have by having the Son of God come to earth and show you how to do it. And what did he say to the enemy head-to-head, face-to-face, when you feel like you're talking to the devil right in your face? He says, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He showed us how to do it, everybody. you got to find the word. you got to find the things, that, that the keys to set you free. So what are the ingredients for fullness of authority, this authority God wants us to walk in in 2023? Number one is you've got to know that it has been given to you. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Those are demons that they're under your feet and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Have you felt hurt? God says nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's in Luke. Number two, fullness of authority. The more you surrender to authority, the more you're yielding, the more you are under authority. Pastor gave us a great example of the centurion last week. The greater authority you walk in. One time I had an umbrella up here, umbrella protection. When you're under the umbrella, guess what? You don't get wet. You know, my 10th grandchild, Lauren, 
my, my husband took her to Costco the other day and it was pouring rain and guess what she was like oh, 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 because she loved the, to experience the rain okay so that's how you experience the rain of God but you know when there's things raining in the world and raining around you that you're not called to experience you have gotta get under the umbrella you've got to get into the presence of God you've got to be aligned with his word you've got to know what he says you've got to pick up the keys because when you're under his authority, then you're in alignment and the things that you need to see happen are going to happen. God says it's time for things to happen in 2023. It's time for things to happen. So there's an authority. So the centurion, which meant that he was a man who had 100 people under him in the army, came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, you know, one of my servants, key word, is sick. But I don't even want to bother you to come to my house. Only say the word and I'll be healed. That's somebody who understands authority. They get how it works. So he's been around it because he was in a natural army and he saw how it worked. And as he worked that principle in his life, he understood the spiritual authority. So Jesus said, addressed his faith as being great. And he said, he prayed for the servant. He said, and your servant will be well will be healed. See, sometimes we think it has to be, again, a certain way. And God says, no. Let me do it the way I want to do it. Just agree with me. If we're looking for the final output, which is, in this case, it was healing, then at that place, we have to just say, Father, show me how you want to do this. Allow the creativity of God in the midst of it. And he did. He said, God, I mean, he said, Jesus, at that point, you don't even have to come. And Jesus said, you're right. Your servant's going to be healed. I give you the keys to the kingdom. We share that on Matthew 16, 9, Luke 10, 19, I shared with you. I want to share with you Luke 22, 25. Jesus said to them, in this world, the kings and great men lord over the people and say get your friends he's talking about someone who's in a position of authority but really does not have the relationship with them he goes on to say but with you it's going to be different that's not how we're going to do it those who are the greatest among you are going to take the lowest rank they're going to be the servants of all is how many translations say it and the leader should be like a servant who is more important than the one, who, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here. I am among you as the one who serves. If you want to have great authority, you're going to have to be a great servant. Jesus, one of the greatest things he exemplified on earth was serving. As a matter of fact, Paul, Apostle Paul, called himself a bond servant, a bond slave, what that meant is he was so devoted to Christ, he was actually, he saw his life as given away and given over to Christ, the way you would look at someone who was totally committed to a person, whether they wanted to be or not. Out of sheer obedience, he became a bondservant to Christ. And so God's uh, example here and demonstration is it's about serving and yielding because he says the greatest in his kingdom will be a servant of all does it look the same all the time no it doesn't look the same but what does it look like it looks like someone who goes low it looks like someone who has a heart to serve it looks like someone who doesn't resent serving it's not a to-do list to check it off and say i did this aren't i so great it's no i'm in the game with you god i'm in the game wholeheartedly in this moment i'm in the game and that's why you really, literally, your faith works in the day. Because you don't know if you have tomorrow. So are you taking today or are you holding your breath and saying, you know what, maybe in 2023 I'll kind of figure this out. Maybe halfway, you know, I don't know, May, June, I'll kind of get it and I'll be all the way in. I'll commit to be in by June. You don't know if you have till June. None of us do. So are we in today? Are we wholeheartedly serving today? Are we wholeheartedly loving the people around us today? Are we praying for them today like we stopped and prayed? Those were gifts, precious gifts being given to people. That's how God wanted to do it today. 
Kathy must be teaching. I have a word for Kathy. But I'm going to share part of it because it's very significant for all of you. So I was in my office this morning and, and praying, and I heard the prayer team praying, and they're so faithfully praying every Sunday for you and for the service. And I was listening, and the Lord says, there's such faithfulness in that room of those who are drilling down. They're drilling down. They're drilling down, faithfully drilling down. It's like drilling for oil. And I don't know a lot about this because I don't live down south where they do a lot of drilling. But I'm sure they have to go days or weeks or months before they hit oil or hit something. But they faithfully go every day and they drill and they drill and they drill because they're getting closer and closer and closer. And the Lord says, some of you see things that you're called to do, and you're saying, I don't understand why they're not happening. And God says, because some of it's for this realm, but some of it's for when you are actually going to be working with Jesus. Oh, new thought. Well, we couldn't really see that far ahead. Says who? There's no time or distance in the Spirit. So is the Lord showing you things that you're going to do when you come and you rule and reign with him on this earth in order to bring the power of God and the presence of God? Just a thought. Sometimes we see ourselves and we get disappointed and God says, but you don't know what I have in store because I'm not a liar. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. He doesn't show you things that aren't going to happen. He's not... You know, saying, here, look at this. Oh, well, sorry. No, it's really not going to happen. That's not our Father. It's not our Father. So the Lord is showing you things to come. So that's why it's so important to be faithful here because you're growing and you're being groomed and you're being refined. Refined, 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 refined. That word contrite heart means crushed like powder. Refined, 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 refined. That's part of the process. And if we love him, we go through the processes. We go through the things that he puts before us. So, God sent the answer to the world in the form of a child in the crash. Can I see the crash again? Thanks. A child. You know, Isaiah had a lot of prophecies. He was around 700 years before Jesus. And the Lord showed him a lot of things 700 years down the road. Can you imagine? And one of the things he said is he said that a child would be born this day in the city of David, Isaiah 7:14. And you shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. God is with us. He, was, he, had, a, he had a plan, and it was well defined. And Jesus, as we know him, was God with us. He was the promised Messiah. Did everybody recognize him? No, they did not. Because they just couldn't imagine that that would be the answer. A baby? born outside in the troughs with the animals and, you know, like they said, there's no room at the inn. And as we shared, you can go back last year when we talked about what the setting actually was, but literally it was nothing spectacular, outstanding, no five-star hotel. It was peaceful. It was powerful. It was simple, and it got people's attention to the point that it intimidated the king who wanted to get rid of all the children because there was such a power in this child, in this one that was small, that was sent. Why was there power? Because he was the answer. And guess what? Today he lives in each of you. You carry the answer. That's why there's such a power and authority you walk in, whether you know it or not. That's why people don't like you sometimes, because you carry a power. You carry the presence of God. 
They don't understand that. They're intimidated by it. They don't know it. They're confused. They, the, the darkness in them is, wants to run from it. Have you ever met anybody and they're like, oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> they really didn't want that child that's on the inside of you. Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, a son is given. And the government, the government of heaven, all the most powerful government that ever existed through eternity, was, is, and is to come, will be on his shoulders, not on yours. You don't have to carry it. And his name shall be called a Wonderful Counselor. Best counselor there is. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. A Father that lasts forever. A Father of all fathers. The greatest Father that ever lived. The, fathers, the Father on whom all fathers were named. So Isaiah points us to a hope through that child. He shares with us a glimpse, and on earth we get a glimpse, but there will come a day that you will know the fullness of that Jesus, of his love, of his power, of his authority. You'll know it in full. But for now, we have pieces, we have glimpses. And you know where we get a lot of those glimpses? Through each other. We see the power, we see the presence, we see the love, we see the gifts, we see all the uniqueness. And that's why the body of Christ is so important. Because when the body comes together, it all sort of makes sense. It's like you don't just have an ear over there and an eye over there and a leg over there. When you see it all together, it's like, oh, we get it. We see it. We've got it. We're getting a glimpse. We're getting a bigger picture. And that's what the Lord is after. That is, people have the peace and the power and the authority to be all they're called to be here in this season on the earth. So my encouragement to you is to remember that even as the world waxes worse, worse, which God has said in his word would happen, that's a lot of W's all together, we don't get worse. We get stronger and we get fuller and we get wiser, and we have greater measure as we hold on. As things may be chaotic around you, God says, watch for my explosion in 2023. Watch what I'm going to do in 2023 and show you who I am. Amen? Amen. Lisa. Okay. Hallelujah. So, that was really good. Amen. So, I have two ways I could go with this. The Lord has been showing me, and I'm like, God, tell me which way you want me to go. <laughs> so, we give. When you give as a Christian, you give from our abundance. Okay, and some of you say, well, that's not me. I don't have abundance. Well, that's really not true because the Lord told me everything. This is what God said. It's in the word of God. So we just need to do tweaking. And in 2023, we're going to have to tweak, tweak our thinking because the world has gotten on us. The world's thinking has gotten on us. We come from another kingdom. So what you want to do in 2023 and in the rest of this year is you want to stand in the promises of the kingdom of God, not this kingdom that's passing away. Okay, so we give out of our abundance. Well, I don't have abundance. Yes, you do. Because Jesus said, God said, everything I have, I gave to my son. Everything. It says in the word that God has a cattle on a thousand hills. His streets are made of gold. The gates are one piece of pearl. Okay, so Jesus, God gave everything to Jesus. When Jesus died, guess what? He rose to heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he gave us everything that God gave him. So therefore, we do give in abundance because we have an abundance in us. And it's not just money. 
We give an abundance of our time, our talents, everything we are. And so I just love this time. This is a time of praise and worship when we give to God. And just tweak your thinking. When you feel like the devil tries to put the squeeze on you, you don't have enough, you say, no, I have enough. Because God is enough for me. Amen? And so you just got to believe. Again, we got we to remember, we live in this world. I think it was Paul who said this. We live in the world, but we're not of this world. We're of another kingdom. And this world is going to come to our kingdom because I truly believe that 2023 is going to be a year of healing. I honestly and truly believe that. And it's funny that you talked about the gifts because God brought me back to the gifts that he gives the church and healing and miracles are one of them. And I sit there and I say, God, I'm asking for these miracles. I sit there. I, I, it says that the spirit dis, uh, disperses, but I want to ask for it. I want the miracle of healing in me. I want the miracles of healing to flow out of me, to flow through me, the miracle of faith when everybody and everything and tells you it's not possible but there's this little small voice inside of you that says it is possible because my father said it because that's when you get out the word and you're being bombarded like a machine gun now I have three kids so I watch a lot of army movies that's what it feels like sometimes when the devil's talking to your brain you can't even get a breath in there so it's like and you feel like you're all shut up. And I go in my room and I open up the book and I say, but this is what God says. I am healed. I am whole. I am. I don't have sickness and disease. I have all things through God and through the strength that God gives me. You have to have the tenacity, the courage, and the boldness to go before God and believe his promises. I will not be denied, denied the promises of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we have um, put a couple challenges out before you. One is the um, goat that we're raising money for in the Amen. junior high. Junior high went out and delivered cookies this week. They have, I think, about $30 left toward the goat uh, to purchase a goat for a family. We have chickens. Only thirty dollars left. Yeah. Left, yes. Do you know that that goat? It, I know it doesn't sound because we're not here, but you know that goat will feed and give milk for an entire village. Yeah. So it's definitely worthwhile. Amen. Amen. And we have chickens. Chickens, uh, fourteen dollars a dozen. So last year I think we sent like ten dozen. Fourteen dollars a dozen, which again feeds a family. Then they can sell the eggs. And this is how they make a living over in like Africa. Uh, we have a coat outreach, which isn't financial, but some of you have coats, as we said, that you want to give. We'll do that through January. Um, so, you know, there's lots of ways we can give. Uh, personally, in the house, <clears throat> excuse me, we have our finances the last few weeks have been down. And I understand between Christmas and there have been some people out with sicknesses. But if there's anyone who did miss a Sunday and you can make that up, that would be awesome because we want to be able to stay on budget for December. And December goes a little bit different for us because we this is our week three, but Friday is actually our last service of the year because we don't come back together again until January 1st. So think in terms of we still have all of the different things to carry in December, even though it runs a little bit differently for us. Anything Amen. else, or can you pray? So, so we adults can give to the chickens yes. and the goat yes. if you want to. So far, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you could just make that. Remember, it's fourteen dollars for a dozen chickens, and we're only thirty dollars short from getting the goat. So, if you want to do that, you could put that in your memo section or put it on the app. And toys? Are you still collecting toys? Toys for Hope Church. At the Garvey. If anybody buys toys. Yep. Different kids buying toys. Yeah. Amen. So we're going to pray over it. So, however, uh, remember, we have enough. We give out of our abundance. You give out of your abundance. It's the same with the words. Watch what's coming out of your mouth. Is it abundance or lack? We give everything out of our abundance. So I want you to take that this week, that you give out of your abundance. Because 
we, Jesus has provided the abundance for us. It's nothing that we've done except for say yes to Jesus. That's it. If you said yes, you have the abundance. So, Father, I thank you, and I pray right now for all of those who are sowing seeds. Father, I thank you uh, for the blessing, the many blessings. I thank you, Lord, that you provided the abundance that we give. And, Father God, we want to honor you in every area of our life, and finances is a big area. But I thank you like you've done everything else in our life. All we had to do was say yes to Jesus, and we get the entire package by just saying yes. Being bold and saying, I want God, I want all of God, and I will not be denied all of God in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this coming week. May the blessings of heaven blow upon this congregation and may the spirit of God fill them with the courage that they need to pursue you all with their heart, their soul, and their mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in Until the Son of God appears, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. A couple quick announcements for you. Friday evening, we will be here for service at 7 o'clock, okay? That way, if people are working, you will have the time to get here. So we will be here Friday evening. We will not be here a week from today, all right? So just make sure everybody has that. It will also be on the app, the information you need. We will be having refreshments right after. Our service is usually about an hour. And so it's going to be, it has some great things that will be happening and we'll have refreshments out in the foyer. So a really good time to bring people to experience the presence of the Lord. Also, uh, January, we have some really great um, things coming up. And so you can check them out in the foyer or the app. Very exciting things toward the end of January. And I'll leave you with that. We'll start talking about it when we get back together next year. However, we are having prayer December 30th, and we're always praying about what the Lord is saying for 2023. So that's 7 o'clock Friday night. So we have actually the next two Friday nights we will be here having service. So we'd love to have you. And if you want to bring cookies for Sunday, or not Sunday, for Friday night, I'm sorry, uh, we will, uh, we'd love to have some cookies if you would like to bring some. So last thing is... Um, Prayer team is up front after service with, if you need prayer. I encourage you to go into this week asking the Lord who he wants you to be praying for, who you can bless, what he has for you, what power and authority he wants you to be walking in. And look for the words that the Lord may be saying and speaking to you for 2023. Okay, it's right around the corner. Bill, can you pray for us? Father, I thank you for every heart in this place, God. I thank you that this is a service for God, just fresh faith and grace to just come upon our hearts, God. I thank you that you have met hearts, God, in every place. You're casting away fear, casting away doubts, casting away anything that would separate us from your love, Father. So I just thank you that today's message, today's worship, everything that's happened in this place, God, I thank you that it would just continue to just multiply in every heart, in every home inside this place right now. So I thank you for just releasing that right now, God. 
Fill them with your love, your power, your goodness, your authority, your mercy, all that you have for them, God. We just release it one more time. In the powerful name of Jesus, we say amen.